Hi, I'm Tom Barclay, Senior Product Manager for Flash Professional. Thank you for coming back. In the first video, uh, we talked about creating a simple game, a platypus game, using the toolkit for CreateJS, which is a complementary extension for Flash Professional CS6 that allows you to create your assets, do your animation in Flash Professional, and publish those assets out to the CreateJS open source framework. In this video, we're going to play the role of a developer and add interactivity to that content uh, using JavaScript and taking advantage of the open source libraries that are part of that framework. So as you can see, we've got the platypus here in the browser. This is where the designer left off, um, published out that HTML file, as well as a JavaScript version of the symbols in the library and the content on the stage. But at this point, we don't have any interactivity. So let's take a look at the, uh, the library and see the content that was exported here. Um, so here's the JavaScript version of the library. As you'll notice, the code is very human readable, very easy to understand what's going on here and to be able to take that and to reuse all of the symbols that are represented here as instantiable, self-contained JavaScript functions. So if we look at the stage, you can see uh, it picked up the name of the FLA file as the name of the stage. Uh, and then it includes all of the layer names that we had in Flash Professional. Score, platypus, background, those three layers that we saw in the timeline in Flash Pro. You can also see that instance name for the text field that we had uh, in Flash Pro. So it picked up that instance name, as well as the instance name of the instance of the platypus animation symbol, uh, and created new instances of those. So it uses the new keyword to be able to create a new instance of these symbols, which are available down here, uh, all of the symbols that are used within this file have been exported from the library in Flash Pro to JavaScript. So you can see this platypus symbol now uh, with the frame injection, frame script injection that we put in the timeline, the go to and play to the fall frame label name. Uh, and it includes all the tweens. And this creates an Easel JS movie clip, which is really an association of a tween JS tween and a container. Um, so you can see that it's very similar to what you already know in ActionScript, uh, and everything is very clean and easy to use and to be able to reuse. The HTML file that it creates simply loads, uh, references the libraries. In this case, these libraries are hosted on code.createjs.com. And then it also loads the JavaScript version of the library. And then down at the bottom here, it sets up the canvas element in HTML, picking up the width and height as well as the stage color from Flash Pro, and then calls an init function. And the init function just runs some JavaScript here that uh, sets a reference to the canvas from that canvas element, creates an images holder for an image ob uh, object, and then it uses the preload.js uh, class to be able to preload those assets, the images as well as any audio used within the file, um, and then calls a handle file load uh, handler that basically adds those images to the images object that we created earlier. Once it's done that, then it calls this handle complete function that creates a reference to the stage timeline, the root level timeline from Flash Pro, which is a new instance of the Platypus game that we saw in the Platypus game JavaScript file. And then creates a reference to a stage, passes that to the canvas, and then adds the root level stage to the stage that we created. And then it updates it. And that sets up a ticker, which is basically a heartbeat mechanism that sets the frame rate for the content and then a listener for the stage. And it's going to play any sounds that are associated with that root level timeline. So for the game developer, they will take the code that's been output, that code from the toolkit for CreateJS, and they will typically start with a fresh HTML file. This allows the designer to continue to work with those assets and publish out new versions and to preview them using that HTML file without disrupting the workflow for the developer who's working on the interactivity. So all you need to do is insert the libraries that are required, as well as a reference to the JavaScript version of the library exported from Flash Pro. And then we're going to create a new JavaScript file. Uh, we'll call it gamedev.js. And simply, we're going to copy over the JavaScript code that was from the HTML file that we had generated and just drop it in this file. And then we'll add our game logic um, to, this, to this file. 
And we'll do that through the tick method here. So the tick method is called on every frame. Think of it as like the enter frame event in ActionScript. And what this is doing is looking um, at the platypus, and it's creating an array of platypi, and it's checking to see if there's a 1% chance based on a random number, it will add a new platypus instance uh, to the stage. And you can see here, it's just setting the, the scale X and scale Y properties. It's setting the X position to the right side of the stage, uh, the Y position uh, ba based on the height of uh, the overall stage, and then the setting the velocity, the X and the Y velocity. Um, and then it's getting an on-click event and setting a on-click handler on the balloon because we want to be able to click the balloon and not on the parent to the balloon, the platypus. Uh, and then it sets up an on popped event here and calls a handle balloon popped function. And then it's just pushing that instance that we created into the platypi array, and then it's adding that new instance to the stage. So if you're an ActionScript developer, you'll find that the APIs that are available in the CreateJS framework are very familiar to what you're already working with. It'll make it very easy for you to start building HTML5-based experiences using the APIs. And then on every frame, it's going to go through that array of, of platypi, and it's going to uh, calculate the velocity as well as for the X and Y velocity. And then it's going to see if there's been a hit if you've clicked on the balloon, and it will remove the child if you've done so from the array as well as removing it from the stage, and then it will update the score. Uh, and it will do that by calling these various handler functions. So there's a handle balloon clicked function over here, which takes an event object. Um, that event object is on the balloon, so we need to map it back to the parent. It's so basically using the display list hierarchy of EaselJS, we're able to do that mapping back to platypus. And then we're using the go to and play function, just like in ActionScript, to be able to navigate back to that pop frame label. Um, and then it's going to update the score. And then very importantly, it's going to update the stage on each tick. And what that's doing is refreshing the canvas um, with the changes in the position. Um, and that's all there is to be able to add the interactivity that you saw in that game to be able to click on the balloon, to be able to have the platypus move across the stage. And you can see how easy it would be, let's say we wanted to uh, increase the number of chances for a platypus to appear on the stage, and maybe we'll slow it down a little bit. We'll change the X velocity to, say, 2, and we'll save that. And we can actually run this right here in Dreamweaver CS6 by clicking on Live, and you can see now, actually I should probably restart that, and you can see we've got a lot more platypi coming in here, but moving rather slowly. So I can click on them, and you can see you know, how quickly you can make a change and see that change right here within Dreamweaver without having to do a compile since we're dealing with just HTML and JavaScript. So that's all the code that's really required to start working with the CreateJS framework to add interactivity and take advantage of the ability using the toolkit for CreateJS to publish out your assets and to be able to use the various libraries that are part of the CreateJS framework to build a game and create Flash-like experiences in a language that's going to be very familiar to you coming from Flash and the ActionScript. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you'd like to learn more about it, I would encourage you to go to the CreateJS Developer Center where these assets as well as a detailed script are available for you. Uh, you can download the toolkit for CreateJS and start working with Flash Professional CS6. Thank you very much for watching.